Hey y'all, this is Misty with crazyaboutteaching.blogspot.com. I am here to kind of share um, a little bit of knowledge that I've learned about containers. This is an active inspire tip. And containers are pretty neat. What happens um, a lot of times is a lot of people don't use it just because it does take a little bit of work. But it, actually the more you do it, the better it'll be. And you can do it faster. So what the goal of containers is this I have three shapes right here what I want is the students to come to the board and pick the name of the shape let's say that the student thought that the hexagon was the correct shape so they would take it and drag it if it's wrong it automatically goes back so you are the one who are going to set that up but let's say that they move the square to the correct shape and you hear that it makes a little beep and I can set whatever noise that I want to let them know that it is correct so this is what I how we would do it so I added I inserted all three shapes then I inserted all three different texts so what I did was I click on the shape I go to my property browser as you see, we see a lot of things. I'm going to go ahead and minimize the label. You see a lot of different things, but you do see the word container. So what I did was, when I, I clicked on the picture, as you can see, I went ahead and you can use keywords, but I'm using just a specific object. Then you're going to click on which one you want it to match up with. And as you see, I have the shapes if you click on it, it actually shows you the different shapes that's on that page which is really neat but I want the text and if you click on it, it tells you you want of course the diamond with the diamond word and you just click OK and um, you can do completely contained or centers must match it's up to you and then you would want it to do true of course because that's correct and then right here is where you do the sounds you can choose from many different sounds. This is just um, sounds that I pulled up and put it on my shared resources. You could do boing. I mean, you could do a lot of different things, R really cool things actually with it. Ricochet, anything. All you got to do is click on it, press open, and it automatically saved. And just make sure that you put true. Okay. So what you do, same thing. Click on the shape, the next shape. Go to container. So I can minimize this. For some reason, it does that. Here's container. I did specific object. I went ahead and clicked and make sure, of course, this is a square. So let's find the text that actually says square. There it is. Press it. Completely contained. True. I made a beep noise. Same thing. Click on it and just pick whichever sound that I wanted. Let's do an explosive. And then I did true again. Same thing for the hexagon. Click it. Let me go to specific object again. Find the text that it goes to. Completely contained. True sound. Do the boing and true. Okay. Now let's click on the text. Let's go all the way down. I don't know why these are popping up. Okay. So I did specific object. Then I made sure that that word matches, the word diamond matches with the same image. So I just kind of did the reverse. Um, I put centers must match, but um, you can do completely contained. It just means that it's touching exactly the centers must match it for it to show that it's correct and true and true. Same thing for here. Make sure you make sure, of course, it matches your image okay true oh I didn't have a sound here I don't think I had it I have it on the um, picture actually okay same thing again now I'm um, there are different ways that you can do this this is just the way that I wanted to share with you so if you saying wait wait I know how to do this and I'm sure there's other ways and if you wanted to share another way to use containers you can you can also type in the keywords as well 
um, there's options for you. You can do anything. You can do specific or you can actually do the keywords. It's just easier for me to do specific objects. So I just wanted to share with you what we do. So I'm in presentation mode, and let me just show you again. Little diamond. Little sound comes up, and you know they love that. Square. And hexagon. But if I did put this hexagon right here, it should kick it back. So there's something that I did not do, so that's okay. So I go back to my container. Okay, yeah, that, that's it right here. All right. And make sure that it's attached to the right image. Okay, yeah, it is. All right, guys. So that is it. I hope this really helps with containers. I know I was um, very scared to start using containers just because it's very difficult. And there are some already on Promethean Planet that you can use. But hopefully this does kind of help you a little bit and you're able to use containers in your flip charts. If you have any questions, comment below. Thank you.